Hello, it's Sarah, and welcome back to another Polymer Clay Day video. Um, continuing on with the Christmas project that I'm working on, I am now painting tiles, and you know what? I am, I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm going to cover a couple boxes with Christmas tiles too, because I think they may sell at my craft show as like ornament boxes, you know, like that you can store your ornaments in and stuff like that. I'm going to make a couple. So I am stocking up on tiles and it's just, it's good because it's new again. It's something new again. The colors are bright and pretty and I'm just really enjoying this. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to I think I have a video out on painting tiles, but I'm just going to go over it quickly again and also stamping on tiles. So I have some nice brand new archival ink, nice and juicy, because um, I was playing last night and it wasn't working too good. So let's see. These are not baked yet. I have some that are baked already that I'm going to paint, but I just wanted to show you how I do this. And I wanted to use like, <clears throat> this is just a plastic knife. Some of the cheaper tools that I have, I have a lot of different tools. So um, I'm just trying to make it as simple as I can so that anyone can do it. So here is my clay. I rolled it out on my pasta machine. I'm going to just cut a couple tiles. This is a uh, Sculpey 3. I didn't use the Primo for this. I did find a half a pack of Primo, by the way, but I had I had a lot more of the Sculpey 3, so I'm just using it. Um, so I'm going to cut these into tiles. I think I'm going to cut half, I'm going to cut it in half, and I'm going to use half of it for the music. I'm going to try stamping onto that. Um, but this one I'll make into like, let's see, I'm going to make these kind of small-ish. I want to do like filler tiles. We'll see how it goes. Oops, that's shiny. All right, so this, uh, I'm going to cut in half. Okay, so these are kind of the smallest I've done. I mean, this is pretty much the average size. It's like, this is like an inch by a half inch. And this is like an inch and a half by three quarters of an inch. So they're fairly big. But I want to make some painted um, ones that aren't as big so I can use them, always have an opportunity to use them on my piece. The ones I did last night are even like bigger. So um, I want to make, I just wanted to make, try making some small ones. So we'll see how it goes. So all I do is think of a shape. Oh man, you know what I was going to do? All right, I'll do this one. I want to make it into a, look like a package, like a present. Let's try and zoom in. Um, I just came across this one. Sorry, I'm trying to get it like at a good angle. There we go. Um, this one looks like a present. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to paint it like it's a present. So this one, I'm just going to go, let's see, I guess you got to go, uh, it's kind of small. So just make lines like it's got ribbon tied around it. And that's it, guys. I'm going to do checkers, just a check pattern. I'm going to do uh, like a harlequin. I call it a harlequin. I don't know if that's actually what it is. But you go from the center to the corner, center to the corner, and then do the same thing on this side. Corner to the center center to the corner. I like those. I'm going to do a couple. Am I in the shot? No. All right, so you get the idea. You just take, this is actually, I have used a kitchen knife. I wouldn't suggest that because then um, you shouldn't really use it again in the kitchen, but this is non-perforated. So I've used a, a perforated knife and it makes the perforations so, uh, all right, let's see. What about, I don't know, what about like a, sh um, uh, 
And you really don't even have to like slice. You can just push down. And that does it. So I got that one. And might as well finish these up, right? I'm going to put two lines and like a harlequin in the middle of that or something or an X. That's kind of cool. I don't think I've ever done that before. All right, so those I'm going to bake. So you see what I did? Then you bake them. I'm going to just set them on this tile over here and I'll throw that in the oven. But I also want to stamp on this one. And what I like about um, stamping with ink, I have actually I have two different. I wanted to do it with this one too. Yeah, I'm going to cut this in half and do it. Um, because it's cool because it leaves an impression, but that impression is black too. So it's definitely cool. So I'm going to do this one first and hope for the best. So I'm just inking up this top end. Can't see me. This little section here. And I'm going to go over here now and give some pressure. Not a lot of pressure because I think, oh wow, that's dark. I don't like it. I'm going to do it again with less ink. Boy, that's a, that's a juicy, um, it's a juicy tile, uh, a juicy clay. Uh, what am I trying to say? Ink. I'm going to try and see if it'll wipe off because now my white is not going to be white. But I don't love that. So I will get another piece of clay and try it again. I don't, I don't mind messing up for you guys because I want you to see what happens when you mess up. You know, like what you do. So I just rolled that back into a scrap clay piece and I'm just cutting out a couple more pieces and I'm going to try and ink it up a little less juicy. Like I'm not going to push as hard with my ink pad this time and see what happens. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, just be patient. I got a couple comments that the last video was long and that's the point. I want to show you in real time the process and also my thought process. Uh, what's going on? What am I thinking? How, you know, um, all that stuff. So that's what I like. I'm new to um, art journaling. So when I watch the art journal videos and they're sped up, I don't get as much out of it because I don't know what they're thinking or what they're using or why and all that. Um, so I feel like when I do my tutorials, I just want to share um, what I would like to see also from a video. So I'm going to try this one this time and just see if it works better. It's my, I'm just going one, two. Let's see how much ink is on there. See, there's ink. All right, I'm going to try it. I missed a little spot. It makes me mad. Um, do I want to? I'm going to just put this right here. Oh, that looks good. Look how pretty that looks. That part looks good. Like, I'll keep it. I think I'm going to keep it. Maybe I'll just won't use that. Um, so I'm going to try this again. I'm not going to put as much ink. It does look juicy. Maybe I'm just going to do more gentle. I am not gentle, we know. Those of you who... <clears throat> Maybe a juicy stamp isn't the way to go. Um, a juicy ink pad. But, that being said, we did it. I showed you. Now, you know, do it yourself. Trial and error, play, have fun. Don't stress, it's okay. Um, but yeah, I maybe not an inky um, ink pad. So I'm gonna bake these two. I'm gonna cut this one. I really like this one. That's gonna be cute, but I'm gonna bake it first and then I'm gonna paint over it too. I'm gonna do this one. I like that. I mean, you. 
Okay, so I put those in the oven and these are ready to go. And these are so fun to paint. I am going to do the gold first. I just put out some gold, red, and green. But I want to do the gold because it takes a couple coats to cover. Um, and that way, oh, have a hair. See how sheer it looks? And I mean, that's fine, but I um, kind of want this to be opaque as possible. I just like the way it turned out on these. I'm going to put the gold on this again. So basically, I am just using a flat brush and going right in there with a lot of paint. Not, um, not very much water on my brush because like I said it's a sheer paint so if I add water it's going to come out even more sheer so for the gold anyway all right let me rinse that off and I'll show you how the red looks I'm going to go in with I'll make this a red package should I or a green I'll do it red and green so this will take a couple coats too um, just putting it on there. Should I do red and green? I think it will look cool. Hey, you never know until you try. Um, but this is so fun. Like seriously, this just um, make yourself a bunch of tiles and then just paint and there and add it to your stash. <clears throat> and you'll, ugh, I just went into the gold. Durr. Uh, I'm worried about my battery dying. For some reason, I have a Canon ELF. That's what kind of camera this is. My batteries don't last very long at all. Um, I can also only film for 10 minutes at a time, and the camera shuts off. I should probably look into that. Um, I think I'm going to do this green. Because I have to go into edit then, um, I use, oh my gosh, it's a program on the computer to edit, like, so I just can join everything together and I make it into an MPEG, like a different format, and that way I can put up a video that's longer than 10 minutes or else I just have a bunch of 10 minute videos, which would be annoying I think um, and you know guys listen you don't have to watch me do this whole thing if you get the point I um I do the uh, forward fast button or you know I just scroll through a little bit and get to the next section so I mean you get the idea I will actually finish these up I'm gonna definitely do another coat of the red and green and probably a couple more coats of the gold and I'll come back and show you the next step. Alright, be right back. Okay, I just got a bunch of tiles out of the oven and I wanted to show, like this was a new one I did. It's like a starburst. Um, I did a bunch of packages. This is a different sort of starburst where it comes from the center. But that's what they look like. They're just um, plain old white tiles and I'm going to keep these in a baggie. I have a baggie here. I'm just going to put them all in there and that way when I like say I start a project I can just pull them and paint them to coordinate with whatever I'm making. So I'm going to stick those in the baggie to the side and I pulled out the ones that we stamped on the, I like the darker ones, but I don't mind the lighter ones, so I am going to, this is what I was going for, these. And I like adding stickles to them. Uh, let's see. I finished up quite a lot of the other towels, and I'm going to show you the next step once we do it. These are dry, and I can um, show you that. So here, first of all, I'm going to do... These, this took like two to three coats of each color. And even this gold, when you look at it some ways, it's not as opaque, but that's okay. But the next thing I like to do is add 
color or um, paint to the edges. So I've already done these. I did a couple in gold and a couple in silver and they're dry and ready to go because I wanted to show you the next step so I wanted to let them dry. I'm going to do these with silver and I have this metallic silver paint and you just use whatever metallic paint you have and I'm using the tip of my finger just blot it off a little and I take the tile and I just put it right on the edge and I do it pretty thick and if it kinda um, goes up onto the edge I don't mind I like that actually so if it gets on top is what I mean and then just let it dry and that way Lori Mica always finished the edges of her tiles um, I've done it both ways I don't always finish the edges but I do like it and I figured since you have the paint out you know why not right so like even this one I did a coat of the silver so I'm gonna go ahead and clean my finger off and I'll show you how I'm gonna do these music tiles too. close this up so I like the way this looks with the red and green um, it looks a little more pink than it than it looks red um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it and then this one was kind of like a wash of blue which I kind of like too. I'm going to make these swirly ones blue because I think that kind of represents, it, it represented wind to me. That's what it reminded me of. I'm just going to swoosh that in, the, in that direction. And then I'll do these um, in the red and green. So I have this brush is an angle brush and if you want to learn how to float, watch my painting videos but I'm just going to do, and really it's because I just want to do a wash. So really I just have water and paint in my brush. And I just go down the edge of this tile and kind of bleed it out so it's dark and then it gets to light. That's my thought anyway. I mean you could just actually, let's try and just do a wash on the whole thing. So what I mean by that is it's like a sheer coat of paint. That's pretty and I'm just gonna let it dry so listen use your imagination do what you want make it your own I don't know you could leave them plain I am gonna add stickles to this um, because I just like the way that looks I am a glitter girl I like glitter I like um, oh yeah there's one other thing I want to show you on before we finish the other tiles too oh see look at that it actually smudged the black ink smudged. I'm going to see if I can get off. I just kind of rubbed it and that way it'll take off the excess of the black ink. The other ones don't seem like they smudged. That doesn't mean they didn't. Doesn't look like it. Especially the darker ones definitely don't look like they smudged. Um, so see that's why I like real-time videos so you guys can see what's going on right along with me and we can kind of address it see look that definitely smudged so I'm gonna I'm just rubbing it right on my paper towel right here just made it a lot lighter but it's you can still see it um, yeah I mean uh, the clay is actually kind of a slick surface when it's dry um, what I mean is like when it's hardened it has like a slickness to it. It doesn't have really like tooth that would um, be good for painting. So, you know, it's, it might not be meant like the ideal surface for painting, but it definitely works. I mean, I'm able to paint on it. The other thing I wanted to show you on the these tiles, and they're wet because I just did the edges, was um, I like to add a little bit of pearl white to my red and green just to make it pop. So I'll come in a little and again this is like a wash of color or a side load and it's my preference it doesn't you don't have to but I just like how it makes the the color pop it makes it Christmassy definitely um, Christmassy 
That's what I love about Christmas. More is more. More is great at Christmas. So you can make it really gaudy if you want to. And the edges of these are wet, so I'm getting silver paint all over me, but I just want to finish it. And that way these will be ready to go. I guess I kind of got so, I mean, um, it went all over. But it looks fine. All right, so those, that's basically it. The other thing I'm going to do is put blue on these. Oh, I'm going to put some green just so you can see. I mean, this is basically what I did to these. So that's why I'm, I'm copying off myself. And that's it. Is there a flag, um, a, a country's flag that's red and green? Something. It totally looks familiar to me. Um... super pretty so yeah I'm just doing these I mean that kind of got washed away the whole look and it is um, running so I'm just wiping it onto a paper towel and see what happens because they they did get imprinted too so you can still tell that it's um, music notes under there all right but enough of that I'm gonna go, ahead, go away and come back and show you um, the final step Okay, we're in the home stretch. Everything is dry. I actually just added a coat of, this is a gloss varnish because for Christmas I gloss it up. I, I usually use a matte varnish on every, all my um, painted, painted things because I don't like the distraction of the shine, but for Christmassy stuff, I go glossy. So I just put a coat of that on top of the tiles and the next step I actually didn't do it to these because they're going to get stickles and stickles will seal the paint so because stickles is like a glitter glue and that'll be a coat that can protect it so this these get stickles these are going to get um, going to put lines in the creases and then we can add stickles to that too all right so I have a silver um, this is the uniball right yeah, the Uniball Silver. I'm going to do silver lines on some of them. So I've painted some with a silver edge and a couple with gold. So I'm just separating out the ones with gold and the ones with silver because I'll show you the difference. Or, well, you know, you guys know the difference. It's not like it's... All right. And you just take your Uniball and go down the lines that we made with the uh, knife in the polymer clay. And it just makes them pop with a little metallic shine in there. Voila, that's it. Oopsie. And just let it dry because that will smear and that's the reason I did the um, varnish first before I put the ink because the ink will smear. It has for me in the past. Um, so now we don't need to varnish. We, this is the last step. Well, except for stickles, because I think I will put a little bit of um, stickles on here. All right, so this is actually, that one looks like I did it already. I think that one snuck in here from my other stack. Is this gold? Yeah, that's gold. This is the last silver one. And I did, I did it silver because I just wanted to do silver and gold on some of them. Because that's Christmas, you know, you have silver and gold. All right, looking good. And then I have, I'm going to use my, I don't really like the color of the Uniball metallic pen. So this is just my Jelly Roll metallic gold. I like the color better. Where is my other one? Because I'll show you. There it is. I mean, I don't, I was going to say I don't dislike the color, but they're very different. Let's see. Still metallic. It's like a little more like mustard yellow. You know what I mean? Um, and that's not even really showing. Let's just do this. I don't know why that's not really. It 
might the uh, varnish might still be wet down there in the nooks and crannies because it uh, doesn't really seem to be picking up. Raw clay is ideal for using your um, jelly roll pens, but I see if we can see that. I can't. I don't think I can see it. That's better. I think they're super cool. And then the last step on them is to add a little bit of stickles. So let's see. I have all the colors. I have every color. So I'm going to put on this one silver. I have the stickles and I'm just going to put a dot. Oh, that's a big dot because you know why? It had a little... Um, was stuck. So let's see where on these gold ones I'm just going to put. I'm just going to bring the silver in with the gold. And it just adds a little pop of something, you know? Hey, it's you they're your tiles. Do whatever you want. I'm going to put um First, let's just go ahead and I'm going to show you. I have every color of clear stickles, too. I really like the diamond, though. Let's try crystal. Most of my clear stickles are upside down because I'm starting to get to the end. And I'm just going to put clear stickles on top of all these. And all I do is squirt it out and use my finger. Rub it around. Don't be stingy, just, you know make it as glittery as you need to. The other thing I decided not to do with these, I think I um, put the the white pearl paint on, on top of the green and red and it, it dulled the brightness down. So I wanted to leave these bright. Look how bright this red and green compared to that. So, you know, it's trial and error. Um, but then also on these, I just put a coat of any clear stickles that you have and that will seal it and of course add glitter gotta love it I love it I love it and it it does it makes it look like so that's why we didn't need varnish because it actually looks varnished right it adds that shine to it So that's it guys, this is the painted tiles. So now we have, we're accumulating quite a stash of Christmassy goodies, right? And I'm gonna come back and show you how I do my letters. I'm gonna show you all the different varieties of letters that I use and so we'll be right back with that. Okay, I'm back and that was fun. I love painting tiles, I love painting in general. But now I wanna talk about letters and those of you who have watched my videos, um, I've gotten a lot of questions about what letter stamps do I use or how do I get my letters um, into the clay. I will show you some examples in a minute, but I want to talk about that. This is a set that I got at Michael's in the mosaic aisle. And these are actually <clears throat> for stamping into like a stepping stone. So... Um, they're very deep. This is over a quarter inch deep. So what I mean is when you stamp this into the clay, you're going to go right down to the bottom of the tile. Like this is the average size <clears throat> width of a tile. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I mean, this white one's a little easier to see. See how much deeper that is? So you just want to be careful when you use these, you don't press too hard. Just have a gentle touch. Um, but I use these a lot. I like the shape of them and the size. But, you know, FYI, be careful about that. Then there's this set I use a lot too. And I like it because it, it was a, actually a recollection set that was on clearance. And it's the red, etch red, whatever you call them. Deep red etched stamps. And they have like a little, like that's an A, but see how it's like a cool font? So I like playing with these for certain words. Like look at the H. It has like a little, 
uh, hook on the end of it like the F. See the F and the K? So they're really fun to play with, but they're a bit big, you know, like so say your letters are going to be on your project an, an inch and three quarters tall. The smaller ones are like an inch and a quarter. The smallest is an inch, so that E is an inch. So that's another thing to consider, you know, like this S is an inch and a quarter. Um, but these work really well. I, they're just a recollection set. You guys, listen. I have accumulated this stuff over time, and um, I've it's trial and error, and I've tried some things, and I like them, and that's what I, I kind of just keep all this stuff in this bin so I know where to look for it. And like I said, it's dedicated to clay. Now, these are, I think, Studio G, and they're like a dollar. I think I got these at... Um, AC more and I don't know that I use these as much but they're definitely a good option um, they're small obviously pretty tiny like that's an A and it's tiny but you can definitely use it um, I prefer these now this is going to be a problem because I ordered these from somewhere and I just googled something that I found in her book so what I would recommend is go to MicaArts.com and you can contact Lori um, and she can give you the vendor because I I'm gonna I'm, I'll look through here and when I post this I'll try see here's the tile tip this is the letters that she uses I mean she even <clears throat> made I got this in her class she made this for everyone in the class. I broke mine, my little top of my crown. But this, these letters are exactly what I'm about to show you. And <clears throat> I love them. They're awesome. And when you look in here at supplies, like the listing, she gives you a resource. And I, I just Googled it. It's called uh, www.stampoutcute.com for the letter stamps. It says... Um, I do it on, I guess, like on my iPhone. Look, I'll show you. On Safari. See, that's Micah Arts. But when I went to, it says Safari cannot open the page because the server cannot be found. So I don't know if that means that the, the site is out of business or whatever. I don't know. Um, anywho, uh, I will see if I can figure out where I got them. It's been a while. But this is what they are. Um, they're Jap Japanese. This says A R X I N. What else does it have on here in English? There's a, a www.xyxwj. I don't know what that means. But anyway, we'll see if I can figure something out. They're letter tiles that connect really cool they're a really good size so you get the whole alphabet but what happens is they they connect you click them together so mm, C A B cab and then you stamp it into the clay um, and they're really great so I have two packs of them so that I could do happy you know use two P's whenever you need two letters uh, so I have two packs of them and I use them quite a bit so sorry about that one guys I've also used these are the um, the wood veneers that you get at Michaels or AC Moore they, they have them off and on and I made a little tile I'll show you in a minute with dream and these are two inches they're two inches tall so they're quite large and by like three quarters yeah two by three quarters for the most part this is two by two um, so fun to play with them and they come in a lot of different sizes too I'm seeing a lot of the wood of these like in sets with the whole alphabet you just have to be gentle just press them into the clay gently to get your impression uh, and then of course all your word stamps are going to be great and this one is one that I just use I pretty much use this I be actually that's not true because I have used this on to make little words like that 
a lot of times. So this is believe. This is what they look like. Imagine. Hope. So I have a lot of these. Explore. The ones that are dark in the background are not going to be as good for the clay, but I think I've done it. Like, see, this is what it looks like dream, but you know what I mean? And so in clay, you got to figure it's going to push down. It's not, it's not going to be the same type of impression. So it's like the whole thing is going to go into the clay and you're going to get a little bit of a, uh, impression, but it's not the same as these with just the letter popping out. So that's just the letter. So see the difference? Um, but yeah, all your word stamps are awesome. If you want to make a sentence, you know, so a lot of you that, uh, art journal and stuff may have words that you use for art journaling. I am going to be ordering the Tim Holtz. I think it's called tall letter set, tall letters, but it has caps and lowercase and numbers. I'm going to order that for art journaling coming up. I'm going to place an order at Amazon. I'm going to get some Uni Posca paint pens. I'm so excited. So, um, that is the word letters. So I will go. And then for this piece, obviously it's a Christmas piece. These words, I just used my Christmas stamps, the Merry, I have one Mary that's like really big that I use the, uh, here, let's see if I can find it. This Mary is these letters. But see, it's a nice, uh, nice etched line, really sharp letter, but you just have to be gentle. So the E is, I can tell the E is a bit deeper than the rest of them. But that, that looks pretty good. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, this Mary is a stamp that I don't see on my desk at the moment. I kind of cleared my desk because I'm trying, I think I'm, a friend's coming by and we're going to do some beads. But this one, you know, if you happen to have a word like this Christmas was a stamp. And here, see, this is the stamp. Merry Christmas. But I just cut the Merry off because I wanted to see what it would look like with this Christmas or something. So you just play around with what you have. You guys have such great imaginations. Listen, I'm not telling you anything that you couldn't figure out, I'm sure. I, you know, been doing it a little while, so I just figured I'd pass on a few tips to you. Like this piece is from one of the um, Hampton Arts. Oh, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to, oh gosh. Anywho, look at my collection. This is all the Christmas tiles and stuff. I'm going to be ready to put together my mosaic soon. I want to go over one more type of uh, technique, which is gold leafing. So I'll be Okay, so I'm back, and this is the last technique for this piece, um, the gold leafing. And I'm just going to use this. This is um, the Mona Lisa brand. You can get this at Michael's. Um, it's a little pricey, so use your coupon. But I like this one because it comes in these, um, it comes with like a piece of paper in between each piece. So it's easy to kind of get, I'm going to take, actually I'm going to, oh, I'm just going to leave it because I mean, you don't want it flying all around. You don't want to waste it. And actually this piece of clay is a little small. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut my gold leaf to fit because I don't want to waste the gold leafing. I'm going to just, I've rolled this out on my thickest setting and I am pulling the gold leafing over and laying it right across the clay and the clay kind of grabs it and there you go. I'm wasting a little bit. But I have that other piece right on there and I'm just going to fold it back in and have it for another time. Um, I'm not sure if this is the one that Lori recommends, but I've used this and had success with it. So um, I know there's a lot of different, sorry, I'm, I kind of, um, it flew out of the package. There we go. I'm just putting it back in between those pages and closing it. Okay. 
Now, you just take it and take your roller and gently press it into the clay. You're going to get a little bit of crackling effect, but it's really going to adhere. I'm going to go this way too, just gently. And what Lori did with these is she made grout sticks, she called it, okay? So basically you picture when you do a mosaic, you, you grout it with cement, you know? And for the piece we're going to do, we're going to have little spaces in between our tiles. And that's why you, we painted the base gold, so that you see gold through the tiles. And that kind of looks like your grout. But we're also going to make some of these. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut. Now I also have a couple of, um, and you can keep this scrap and just kind of ball it up and then you'll have a gold leaf ball. Um, I have a couple of tools. I have this one, which is a cool tool, and I never, I use it. I do use it from time to time. But let's see what happens. I'm going to take it and just press it and roll it along the edge of that clay. OMG, that is so cool. Do you see that? I like that a lot. I think I'm going to do another one. I like it. I have other patterns. I think I'm going to try another pattern. What the heck, right? Oh, I'm going to see what this one looks like. This one's like a, I don't even know. Let's just try it. It's like a, it's like a tread, a tire tread. Oh, that's cool. What else do I have? This is like, I don't know. I, you know what? I want to try this one. Now that worked really well. You saw the deep, how deeply etched it got. Now this, I don't know, this is a clear stamp and it might not do as well, but let's try it this way. I'm pushing, giving it really good pressure. And I kind of squished it too much there. I don't love that as much as the other ones. So I'm gonna do you know what else I did? I had a, um, one of the Tim Holtz, um, it was an arrow, and I impressed that. Like, if you have any shape, like for us, we're, we maybe um, like a snowflake would be good, right? So I'm kind of I'm trying to find, um, oh, oh, I know where, right here. I think I have a metal snowflake charm in here. I'm going to try this and just get the um, impression. Oh man, come on. See, I'm not prepared because I have um, other things that I want to review. So I've kind of, all right, I'm going to find it though. I think I have one in here. I'll be right back. Okay, I found them. I have a couple of different um, charms, but I'm going to cut this real quick and show you. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to make this about that wide and then this one and before I did that I should have went like this always have to release your clay because we went over that a couple times with the roller so I have that and I have these I'm going to take these apart and cut them into little like sections now Let's see. So yeah, so this can be used, once I bake it, as grout sticks. I'm taking all the scrap with gold on it and I'm rolling it up into a piece of clay and I, eventually I could put that through the, po oops, damn it, the pasta machine. So I'm just gonna make little kind of sections of that. These are almost tiles, not necessarily uh, grout sticks, because Lori makes hers really small um, and thin, but because of that, I love that design. And I did do this on black clay. You'll get a different effect, whatever color clay you get. So, um, But these are a little bit fat. I'm just going to leave them. I'm going to use them as tiles almost, you know, instead of... Um, 
I mean, there's no reason I couldn't cut these in half, but I want to show you the whole point of it is to have tiny little pieces, that's clay, to, um, to as fillers. So this is basically, all right, let me cut this off. But, so like this really thin strips of clay. And when you bake them, you end up with literally a clay stick like that. And you can cut this with your scissors, um, but I might cut these shorter now. And that way, I want to try the snowflakes, but I'm going to lay these out to bake. And I'll bake a couple long ones. Because you can cut them after they're baked, is what I mean. That one got weird. I'm going to use that for scrap. And so this, I want to, I'm going to move this over here, grab another pile. But this, I want to try and do some, like, impressions of this uh, snowflake. So I'm just going to go right up against the edge and press. Cool, I like it. So these can be just like snowflake, um, gold snowflake tiles. I have another snowflake I want to try. This one. Wow, that's really cool. These I pressed much harder and this I didn't, so you can see a lot more of the black clay um, on that side. And I'm distorting because I just pulled that up after pushing. But I can cut these into tiles. Cool, right? So I'm going to bake these. Throw them in my um, my little. I have a. I'm working. I'm ready to to put this thing together. I've got a lot of tiles ready to go, so I'm excited. I'm gonna film this and put it up for Polymer Clay Tuesday, which is actually tomorrow. Um, I've been filming a little bit here and there. Uh, over the week, but tomorrow I'll, p I'll post this and then I'm going to start working on I'll be filming the rest of um, the putting it together stuff and I will post that next week um, you know, so every week you'll have something to look forward to and uh, I'm going to bake that little tiny one so these are cool looking. Um, so all right, let me um, set this aside. That's the last technique. I just want to uh, kind of touch base on what we've done. We've done lots of different tiles. We've done painted tiles. We've done um, embedding into the clay. We've done word tiles. We've done um, just getting the impression in the clay, mica powders putting charms in there, uh, using all types of things. Like for this specific, this is going to be one of the most mixed media ones I've ever done. I'm adding everything but the kitchen sink. I am going to add, like this was a, um, this was in my Christmas stash. It's a, uh, you know, those, that charms, those charms. Oh, I can't think of it. You guys, I wish I had a brain. Don't forget about using your, um, collage sheets. I even have a bottle cap in here with a Santa on it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, 
but I hope that was a good indication of what there is that you can do with clay. Don't forget to add your stickles and anything. I mean, really, you can embed anything into the clay. Just have fun and, you know, if, it, if you don't like it, you can always ball it up and start again. So, um, look at this. See the gold flecks in there? I'm going to run it through the pasta machine and see. Look at that. I'm going to, I mean, that could be a cool jewelry piece, right? So, all right, that's it for this week, you guys. Thanks for watching.